Niall and the Troll by Tia Kier Thorkelson Upon a night without a moon Above the place called Middle Toon Where high peak hills rise from the earth Like giant's bones from this world's birth One man climbed up to meet his fate In victory or at hell's gate His name Nial, old Sigmund's son, his every foe he'd fought and won. Friends, family, the firelight glow of hearth and home lay far below, beneath thatched roofs upon his farm. Those he loved slept safe from harm. Two days ago, by morning light, they'd come upon a ghastly sight. Within the limits of their lands, a sheep slain by inhuman hands. Its heart ripped out by cold, cruel claws. None knew by who or for what cause. Still this loss was not to be all, for greater horror would befall. In their barn the very next day, lying ruined amongst the hay, torn apart, a valued slave, sent on toward an early grave. His wife and children wept with woe, he shook with rage to see them so, to save them from this end or worse. He'd sworn to stop the evil curse. So on he trudged, on up the hill, to find the fiend he had to kill. But how to seek the creature's lair, the warrior was not aware. Yet despite this, he knew he must. In old North gods, now place his trust. And called upon Redbeard Thor, he pledged his faith, an oath he swore. And then, by something more than luck, from brooding clouds, the answer struck. A single searing shaft of light To show the way in darkest night. As thunder rolled, Thor's hammer found The mark it sought, an ancient mound, A lonely spot where wind whistles, Sprouting trees like boar's spine bristles, Drawing near, he could see where the bolt had struck and left a tear in the hard ground itself a hole, cavernous and as black as coal. He lit a torch and so could see the relics of antiquity. Through the gap he stared and espied the hidden hoard held deep inside. Glimpsing glory he could behold, gleaming treasure, glittering gold, resting place of a long-dead king, now sheltering some nameless thing. For further aid, he now once more offered prayers on up to Thor. His father too, war-god Odin, who Nial knew as he stepped in, would welcome him into his hall, if he was finally to fall. Entering, he held his shield, to defend his axe to wield. Then underfoot he heard a crack, a sudden sound, that sent him back a pace until he looked around 
at what was lying on the ground. The heaps of human bones inside were all composed of those who died when journeying on through these parts to feed a hunger for fresh hearts. Yet shining still, he saw a sword, once the pride of a mighty lord. Gold rings, silver, rich armor too. He thought such wealth could not be true. The splendid sight made his head whirl, enough to make himself an earl. A nobleman forevermore, he thought, enraptured, struck with awe. The craftsmanship was so refined that he failed to hear behind the hideous, horrible hiss of that which knew it could not miss. For as behind him now it crawled, to certain death he would be mauled, if moments more he should delay, to monstrous jaws he would fall prey. But just before he could be hurt, a telltale crack made him alert, a snapping rib which made him spin, wearing his most murderous grin. Yet at the beast on which he gazed, eyes widening, he gaped, amazed. It seemed to him then that he dreamed, saw legend come to life, and screamed. Before him stood a troll so vile, he felt sick and tasted bile. Over eight feet, it was immense, with burning eyes its glare intense. Covered in thick grey-green scales, hide as tough as his chain mail. While the hero stood and stared, its curving yellow fangs were bared. The eager mouth began to drool, a slimy stream that formed a pool upon the floor to his disgust. No choice remained, slay it he must. And then at once he thrust the torch into its face, flame sure to scorch, backward with a shuddering lurch. It flailed and started to search, in vain, but still it could not find the man that used fire to blind. Nevertheless, a swinging limb knocked his torch far away from him. The contest changed as loss of light plunged that chill chamber into night. With the darkness came new fears, for now there twitched the great pig's ears, common to all of Grendel's brood, the better to hunt for their food. The troll sensed an insistent treat, a rich red heart, each pounding beat. So it began, a dance of death, which made him draw a panting breath, with every sideways shuffle, as he heard it snort and snuffle. Ears pricked up, it crossed the gap, with music made by bony snaps. Across the white debris it crept. He brought his axe down as it leapt, buried it in the monster's chest. Now, he thought, he could pause to rest, and in that instant almost died as it surged back, its claws spread wide, razor talons as sharp as knives, used to end many mortal lives. Reaching out for the prize they sought, met metal rings, and so were caught, in well-forged links of chain mail, at which they tore, only to fail, once more it set to stalking him. This gaunt old guardian so grim, 
but bravery he'd never lacked. So in response, Niao attacks, and though it spat and scratched and bit, he drew his blade and hacked at it. Raining down a hail of blows, this thing was worse than fifty foes, yet still its scales were so tough, it seemed no stroke could be enough. To send it back to where it spawned, the rancid pit where it was born. Then its huge hands grabbed at his head. He would have been most surely dead, were it not for the blacksmith's skill that made the helmet he wore still. It held him then in its embrace to break his ribs both face to face. His breath burst out, one startled gasp, then he fought back to break its grasp. And as it scrabbled for his eyes, he smashed its teeth to its surprise. Its agony was plain to see, and so he laughed in savage glee, barking out a sneering taunt, as it sought now to leave its haunt. Niall would not see it escape. He stepped in close, aimed at the nape of its neck, and sliced off its head. A final slash! The troll was dead. Now that the horror was destroyed, the warrior was overjoyed, for the gods had heard his prayer. They will sing of me, Troll Slayer. One last look at its fading eyes, a villain never more to rise. Then Niall turned and went from there to exchange death for clean, fresh air. That bleak barrow he left behind, his wife and family to find, to tend his wounds back at their nest till he returned to take the rest of the riches he'd seen that night by the following morning's light. And so it was, on the next day, that he returned, he knew the way, and once inside, peered around. But not a trace was to be found of the glorious treasure stack, or the demon he had to hack. Despite his disbelieving stare, the funeral mound was swept bare. By some sinister, unseen hand, the farmer could not understand. Must be magic, some kind of stealth. For now the sole remaining wealth, in all the place, the only thing was but a solitary ring. When next he drank in the mead hall, he told his tale to them all. Neighbours and friends alike they heard, made not a sound till his last word. But where he wished to win word fame, another fate befell his claim. While his verse was well received, the truth of it, no one believed.